Textbooks are going to tell you kids that you have an appendix that is vestigial. You don't need it anymore. That's a lie. You need your appendix. The appendix is part of your immune system. Here's an article on the web from University of Chicago. Ask a scientist. Nancy writes in and says, what is the function of the appendix in a human before it is taken out through surgery? This lady writes back and says, the appendix has no known function. It, she's way behind the times on that one. She goes on to say, it is believed that the appendix will gradually disappear in human beings as our diet do not includes cellulose no more. Our diet do not include cellulose no more. <laughs> University of Chicago, wow, good place to get an education. Uh, not in English, apparently, but in the first place, this is not true, okay? The appendix is part of your immune system. You need your appendix. The appendix activates killer B cells like your thyroid activates killer T cells. It's true you can live without your appendix, that's true. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes and both your ears also. Doesn't prove you don't need them. If you take your appendix out, you got a much better chance of getting all sorts of diseases. This textbook says the whale has a vestigial pelvis. Many organisms retain traces of their evolutionary history. For example, the whale retains pelvic and leg bones as useless vestiges. National Center for Science Education teaches, Bossy the cow evolved to blowho the whale. The cow evolved to the whale. And the evidence is the pelvis. Whales have a pelvis, vestigial pelvis and leg bone that serve no purpose. They have hind limb bones that have no function. Just imagine whales walking around. It's true. Well, here's the bones they're talking about right there. Just imagine the whale walking around. I have tried and tried to imagine, and I just can't do it. Almost every type of whale has these bones right there in the abdomen. They are not attached to the spine. That's correct. Textbook says the whale's pelvis is located far from the vertebra and has no apparent function. The whale's pelvis is evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling mammals. This is a lie. Those little bones are anchor points that special muscles attach to that allow the whales to reproduce. Whales are kind of big, you know. And without those special muscles and those special bones, they can't get more baby whales. So either these guys are ignorant about their whale anatomy or they're lying to your kids trying to spread their theory. But it's not true that those are vestigial, okay? There are no vestigial organs, and if there were, think about it, that would be the opposite of evolution. That's losing, not gaining. How's that going to help? You lose everything until you have it all? We could spend two days on whale evolution. Every one of them, Ambulocetus and Pachycetus, have all been proven baloney. They can't be intermediate species, okay? The authors were certain the feet were enormous, even though nothing was found. <laughs> Basilosaurus could not possibly have been ancestral to any of the modern whales. Pachycetus was made from one small piece of jaw, a few, a small piece a small piece of skull, a small piece of jaw, and a few teeth. You find a little bit of jaw, a little bit of skull, a couple of teeth, and you know that it's half whale, half something on land? That's kind of a stretch, don't you think? Yeah, we'll cover more on that later, but there's all kinds of stuff on our website about this. Um, I've got in my museum a 15 and a half foot python snake skin. If you look at the south end of that snake skin, it's got a couple claws attached to a little two-inch bone going up inside the snake's body. We've got them in our, we've got it in our museum, okay? Textbook says, see, boys and girls, this is a vestigial structure. The boa and the python have these little tiny claws. Do whales or snakes have back legs? You can see that they don't. Yet, both animals have vestigial hip bones and leg bones where legs may once have existed. This is a lie. This textbook says they have reduced hind legs, rudimentary hind legs of a python snake. You've got to be kidding. Those little claws are used in mating, okay? The snake doesn't have any arms, and he can't talk and say, uh, scoot over, honey, okay? This has nothing whatsoever to do with walking on land. It has to do with getting baby snakes. 
So once again, somebody's real dumb about their snake anatomy or they're lying to your kids trying to spread their theory. This textbook shows the coccyx, the human tailbone, and a Discover magazine. And it says, that's all that's left of the tail that most mammals still use. Humans have a tailbone that is of no apparent use. I was in a debate in Huntsville, Alabama against the president of the North Alabama Atheist Association. He got up in front of God and everybody and said, Folks, I've got proof for evolution. Humans have a tailbone they no longer need. I said, uh, Mr. Patterson, I taught biology and anatomy. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, <clears throat> without which you cannot perform some valuable functions. I won't tell you what they all are, but trust me, you need those muscles. I said, now, if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I, Kent Hovind, will pay to have yours removed. <laughs> Bend over. <clears throat> Critical thinking, this book says, 2005 edition. At the end of your backbone is a coccyx, a few small bones that are fused together. Could the human coccyx be a vestigial structure? Or is it the start of a newly evolving structure? That's thinking critically. They give the kids two answers, two options, both of which are wrong. There's a third option, you know. Maybe it's fine just like it is. Notice they don't give that as an option, do they? Maybe it was designed to support your colon and support your lower back for posture when you sit and five or six other things you can read your Gray's Anatomy about. Okay? They say, aren't babies born with tails once in a while? No. Well, that baby's got a tail right there. No, he doesn't. It's not a tail. That's just fatty tissue. There's no bone, no muscle, no cartilage. It's not even lined up with the spine. It has to do with the way the baby develops inside the mother. There's fat around the nervous system to protect it until the bone grows around it. And extremely, generally, the, the fat is resorbed into the system as the baby grows and develops bone. But on extremely rare occasions, the fat is excluded outside the body like a big wart. So what you do, you cut it off, sew it up, put a diaper on the kid, and send him home. It's just nothing like a, it's just like a wart. That's all it is. Cut it off. It's not a tail. This one says, the coccyx is a small bone at the end of the human vertebral column. It has no present function and is thought to be the remainder of bones that once occupied the long tail of a tree-living ancestor. They told me when I was a kid, man used to have a tail, but he lost it because he didn't need it. I thought, didn't need it? Have you ever thought how handy a tail would be? Have you ever come to the door with two sacks of groceries? Man, wouldn't that be nice to be able to grab that door and walk right in there? You could drive down the highway and hold that can of Coke and tune the radio knob all at the same time. <laughs> Lost it because we didn't need it. That's a lie. 